This is the fifth in a series of videos about database fundamentals. In this video we're going to look at going from a logical model to a physical data model. This assumes that you are already familiar with terms such as entity, relationship, unary, binary, many-to-many. -many. There were earlier videos that covered these topics. A data model can be documentation to show how an existing database is constructed. It is also a tool for designing new databases. The level of abstraction or the level of detail is going to help us classify a data model as logical or physical. A logical data model is a general depiction of entities and relationships. A physical data model is like a blueprint. It shows enough detail to depict how we would actually build the database. In this example, we have a data model for an auto repair shop. So we have a customer, vehicle, employee, repair order, and repair detail entities. The first draft of the logical model is shown here and it has the entities and relationships. It could also have attributes shown, but we aren't showing them here. However, a review of the draft prompts revisions. Since some attributes for customers and employees are the same, and some employees are also customers, this draft has been revised and another entity added. So our second draft, what we've done is combine the common attributes of employee and customer into an entity called person. And then we have specific attributes for employees and specific attributes for customers. As we have said pre previously, the logical model shows entities and relationships and might also show attributes. The physical model, as we see here, even though it's a small example, has a lot more detail. We see the, the attributes and we start to see definition of the data type for those attributes. We see P by some attributes, we see F by some attributes. So the ph physical data model shown here is the IE notation from Oracle Data, data Modeler. When we go from the physical model, the blueprint, to the relational database, then the terminology changes. An entity becomes a table in the database. An attribute in the data model becomes a column or a field in a table. An entity instance in the model becomes a row or record in a table. The relationship becomes a common column or columns that is in each table at both ends of the relationship. From the model to the database, we would go from person and repair order entities to persons and repair orders in the, as tables in the database. Now, it's not necessary but often customary to take singular terms in the model and make them plural in the database. So we have our entity on the left that gets transformed into the actual database table on the right. One of the principles of relational databases is that each row in a table is unique. The primary key a field or combination of fields that uniquely identify one row in a table gives us that uniqueness for each row in the table. So remember the identifier in the data model? That was one or more attributes that could uniquely identify an entity instance. Well the identifier in the model becomes the primary key in the database. Now a lot of attributes or fields are not going to be unique. 
you're going to see a lot of people, a lot of instances of customer where the customers have the same name. And you might have customers with the same address uh, or phone number. So these cannot be used to uniquely identify each row or each entity instance. So we often create a unique identifier field and assign a value to it that we know will be unique for each record in that or each row in that table. So you have things like personnel or uh, employee ID or customer ID or vehicle ID. So we've looked at the difference between the logical and physical data model. We see that there is a change in terminology when you go from the model to the actual database in uh, the, the actual database that's constructed. And the primary key is used to uniquely identify each record in a database table.